Hello, it's Justin with Lesser Dog Tutorials, and this is video two in the Metroidvania camera tutorial series. And today we will be doing camera follow. And then this is just kind of a precursor to actually having the camera be able to transition between rooms or be locked and confined within a room. So let's get started. Head over to the Metroidvania camera that we made in the first video. And we're going to add a box collider. And we're going to call it Collision Confines Box. So add a new variable that's going to be called the room width. And set the variable type to integer. And then create another variable of the same type called room height. And then these variables are going to adjust the camera confines to a specific room width and height based on the screen size. So it's only going to be multiples of the screen size. At the end of the construction script, we're going to add another set box extent, but this time for the camera confines box. So when you're working with a box extent, that will usually mean from the middle to the edge. So anytime that we're going to be calculating the width or the height of the box, we kind of have to divide it by two. So split the inbox extent pin into its um, individual parts and drag in the room width and height. Then we're going to multiply each of these first by eight, which is half of 16. So multiply the product of the width times eight by the width in tiles. So that would be 16. Then multiply the product of room height times eight by nine which would be the height in tiles. Then you can go ahead and connect the width to the inbox extent X and the height to inbox extent Z, and it should convert them to floats. Then set the inbox extent Y to 10. Now select the root component itself and set the room height and width to one. And change the player trigger extent a little bit smaller so that you can see it within the camera confines. I would say X 120 and Z 66 ought to be good. Then select the camera confines box and let's go ahead and change it so it's a little easier to see. I change it to um, blue and I change the thickness of the line to um, 0.75. And then for the trigger box, I'm going to set the color to yellow. And then the line thickness, I'll just do 0.5. That way you can kind of see them a little easier in the, in the um, actual level. It's easier to pick it out. Now I'm going to set the camera scale to zero just so it's hidden completely. And then I'm going to add a new component, which is a sphere. And this is going to be a way of selecting the actual camera itself while I'm looking at the level. Make sure it's in the root. And then set the location to, to on the Y axis to zero, and then set the scale to 0.25 to make it a little bit smaller. And you can change if you want, you can change the uh, material to something that's a little more easy to see. And make sure you make the room width and height variables visible. So let's go ahead and go back to the main level and change the width of the room to three and make sure it's lined up. If you change it to perspective, you can see that the camera is encompassing the entire tile map, which is exactly what we're looking for. So head back over to the camera blueprint and make sure that the sphere is hidden in game. That way, when you hit play, you won't see it. So head back over to the camera's event graph, and we're going to add an event tick node. And then we're going to create a couple macros. And macros are mainly just functions that can't be accessed by outside sources. So these are really just going to be internal camera things. So create a macro called cam follow player X, and this is going to handle the logic of the camera following on the x-axis, so then we would need to create one for the z-axis as well. 
So now make a few floats and we're going to call them camera X, camera Z, current camera lerping position X, and current camera lerping position Z. And these are going to be used to tell the camera where it needs to be. So in the cam follow player X, add an input and an output and make sure that they are of the type exec. And then bring in the get player pawn where we're going to cast to the uh, player blueprint. And then we're going to get the capsule components world location. Drag in the camera and get the socket location. And so now we have the position of the player and the position of the camera. And we can split the struct pins because we're not going to need um, the Y axis to change it all. It's always going to be the same. But the X and Z are what we're after. But in this specific macro, we're only worried about X. So I like to use the F interp2 function, which I take the current camera position and I take the capsule component position and make that the target. And then I create a new variable that we're just going to get, we're going to assign delta time to. So in the event tick, right at the beginning, just set delta time. And then back in the cam follow player X, we're going to take the delta time and put it into the delta time input. And for the interp speed, um, I like that to be about four. It can be really, you can just make it work for whatever you need. So then drag in the current cam lerping position. And this is what we're going to set in this macro. So all we're doing is just setting where the camera is in relation to the player using the f interp2 function. And then we're going to do the exact same for the cam file player z, but instead of x, we're just going to use all of the z variables. So if you copy everything in this macro and move over to the cam file player z macro, and then you paste it, and we're just going to swap a few things out. So first, add the in and out exec inputs and outputs. And link everything up. And very simply, we're just going to take the return value Z for each of these nodes and put them in. And then for the cam lerping position X variable, we're just going to drag cam lerping position Z variable over top of it with a check mark, and it should replace it. And then we're good for that. So in the event tick, we need to um, use both of these macros. So right after setting delta time, go ahead and bring in X and Y. And so now we have the camera lerping position, but it's not doing anything yet. So we take the camera, and then we're going to set the world location of the camera using these two variables that we made, the cam lerping position X and Z. But first, we need to make a new vector using our cam lerping position. So bring out the camera and get the world location, and then make a new vector using these two new cam lerping position variables we made. And for the return, it passes into the set world location node, which now should set the location of the camera based on where the player is located. But you'll see there is no character because the player trigger is not large enough. So we just need to make the player trigger um, encompass the entire area. And that should do it. And there you go. You have a camera that kind of lerps and follows the player. However, it doesn't really center in the room. So our next task is to confine the camera to the room. Let's do a little bit of a diagram to help kind of explain what we're about to do. So if you have a collision box that we're going to be using as the camera confines, and this is where the camera should be confined, this would be what the origin is, okay? So it's right in the middle. 
and then from each side, this would be the extent. This would be the x extent, and it would be on both sides. And then this would be the z extent on both sides. One is the positive side over here, and then this side would be what is negative. Okay, so if this is x and we're adding, we're adding the, um, the extent to the center, then we're getting this edge here. If we're adding the extent of z to the origin, then we're getting this position right here, all along here. And the same goes for subtracting the extent from the origin and subtracting the extent from the origin of z, right? So basically we'll be getting first these sides, the position of each of these sides, and then having that information where the edges are, we need to use that to determine where the camera is going to be. And you can't say that the camera itself, you know, we can't say that the camera's position itself stops at the edge, because if you do, the viewing area of the camera will be in the middle of that, meaning you can see the left or beyond the wall and you can see in the room. And that's not what we want. What we want is the camera to stop once it gets a certain distance, which would be half of the width of the full screen. We want to stop it if it gets to that to the negative side on X or the positive side. So what we need to do is find the distance from the camera's middle to the edge of the screen. And the same goes for on the Z axis. And luckily, there's an easy way for us to figure that information out. We just take the pixel width and the pixel height and divide by two. And then we have this whole section here. We have that amount that we need to stop at. And the same goes for the top and the bottom. Head back over to the camera event graph. And we're going to add a new macro called get confines box bounds. And this function is going to just get the location of where the box bounds are so that we know where the camera can and can't go. So make sure you add the in and out exec pins. Then drag in the camera confines box. And we're going to get component bounds. Now this has three output pins, origin, box extent, and sphere radius. We don't need to use the sphere radius, but we are going to use the other two. And now we're going to be adding a vector plus vector node and a vector minus vector node. So first add that um, vector plus vector, and you can split the right struct pin because we're not going to be using Y. And then add the vector minus vector node, split the right struct pin again. And make sure that you're subtracting the box extent from the origin. So the origin goes on the top and the box extent goes on the bottom. Now add a uh, multiplication integer node. And then you can duplicate that. And with these, we're going to get the pixel width and the pixel height of the screen. So for the first one, we're getting the width. So you do 16 times 16, since it's 16 tiles with 16 pixels each. And then for the height, you do 9 times 16, since it's 9 tiles times 16 pixels per tile. And now that we have the full width and height, we're going to uh, divide both of those by 2 to get the um, center of the viewing area. So now add a float minus float node and a float plus float node. Then drag the X from the vector addition node into the top of the float minus float node. And from that, we're subtracting the quotient of the width divided by 2. So what that's doing is giving us the positive X position where the camera should be. It's taking the right extent of the box, and all it's doing is subtracting half of the width of the screen space, meaning that's exactly where the camera would be to stop it from going to the right. So we'll need another float plus float, another float minus float node. So just add the other float plus float node because we're going to find the negative X position and just add half of the screen width to that. And then we'll have where the camera would be 
if it was going to the left and getting confined on the left side. So now we're uh, essentially going to do the same thing, but for z. So we'll add the quotient of the screen height divided by 2 to the negative z position, and then we'll subtract the quotient of the screen height divided by 2 from the positive z. Now we need to assign these to some variables. So go ahead and make four variables, and we'll call them confine max x, confine min x, confine max z, and confine min z. And it appears as if there's a lot of floats going on, so we can go ahead and categorize some of these and clean things up a bit. So we'll put the confine max and min variables into a group called confines. And we'll put the player trigger transform and player trigger extent into a category called trigger. And we'll take the room width and room height and put that in a category called room size. And then we'll make a category called camera and we'll just put in camera X, camera Z, and then the lurping position variables. Now drag out the confine variables we just made and we're going to set each one of these. And the top is the max x, the next one is the min x, the next one is the max z, and the last one is the min z. And then just connect up the nodes so everything actually works. Might be a good decision. And then we're going to head back over to the event graph and we're going to replace the current cam lurping positions uh, variables with the camera X and camera Z variables. And then to clean things up, just go ahead and select all these nodes here and we'll collapse them to a macro that we'll call set camera position. And then up here on event begin play, we'll just do the get confines box bounds so that we can get that right out of the gate and use that information later. Now we're going to add another macro and we're going to call this lerp within confines. And this isn't going to be that complicated. It's just going to make sure that the camera is within the confines. So just add your input and output. And we're going to bring in the clamp float node. And the values that we're clamping are the lurping position values. So we can add in the x to the value here, and then take the confine max x, confine min x, and hook those up to the inputs. Then we can duplicate that, and all we're doing is replacing all of the x variables with the z variables. And then from that, we're going to be setting the camera X and the camera Z variables. And make sure you bring that in right before set camera position in your event tick. And then just go into the set camera position macro and make sure it's all working right. And the in and out exec pins are in there. And then we can hit play and see if it works, and it is appearing to confine correctly. Awesome. So that does it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the tutorials I'm doing, please subscribe. I can do more. And if you like the video, then um, prove it. Prove it somehow in some way to show me that you like the video. I don't know how. You'd come up with that. All right. I'll see you next time.